We are here today at the Fujifilm Inkjet Experience where we are discussing Fujifilm core technology of printhead, ink and the accompanying physics that drives many of today's leading uh, digital print engines and will be the technology that dominates tomorrow's machines. Now, Fujifilm is a technology company. We spend something like 10% of our entire revenue on research and development, and that works out at something like 7 million US dollars per day, all of which is spent on research and development to develop this core technology. Now, the way that we operate is to take from this pool of technology, uh, we combine this to create some new and exciting products for, for our customers, and we manufacture these products in uh, uh, using systems that are a blend of Japanese technology with Western experience. Now let's take a look at inkjet ink so we can understand a little bit more about these technologies and learn how we combine these technologies to produce some great products. When discussing inkjet technology, the starting point for our discussions with customers is always pigment dispersion. With inkjet ink, it is vitally important that the pigment is dispersed to a very fine sub-micron particle size. Uh, but it's not just enough to get the particle size well below one micron. It needs to be within a relatively narrow band. We don't want to go too fine or we start losing the optical properties of the pigment. And we don't want to start going too coarse or we risk uh, nozzle blockage and various other undesirable effects. So what we try and do is keep the particle size small but within a narrow band. Now the way that we do that um, is to grind the pigment down uh, to two to three hundred nanometers. Uh, the problem is that when you grind a pigment down that small, the pigment particles want to stick together again. And you need to put in uh, quite a lot of effort to make sure that they, they are not able to do so. So what we do is to surround the pigment particle with layers of Fujifilm technology. Some of these, uh, these chemicals, some of the chemistry that we use for this uh, is not commercially available. The materials are synthesized for us by our laboratories in Tokyo. Now as a result of that, we can produce uh, uh, stable dispersions that will be stable for very long periods of time. Now again, just to illustrate what can go wrong, if we look at this picture here, here we are showing what can happen when a nozzle becomes blocked. Now this distance here is something like 50 microns, so we have approximately a 35 micron blockage. Now this did not start as a single particle. A particle this size would have been caught on one of a number of filters. But what has happened here is that some, uh, some pigment has started to deposit on the sides of the nozzle, and then because the, uh, the, the dispersion was not stable, that particle has, other particles have joined it and it has grown until it has got to this point. So by having stable dispersions, we accomplish a number of things. We increase significantly the head life, but we also uh, ensure that inks that are made a year that are used a year after manufacture perform in exactly the same way as inks that are used a day after manufacture. Very important with a, an inkjet machine to understand that because inkjet printing is binary in every sense of the word, when a uh, a, an inkjet machine goes wrong, as I like to say in a little bit of a joke for customers, when an inkjet machine goes wrong, you pick up a telephone. When a screen printing machine goes wrong, you pick up a hammer. So once we have stabilized the dispersion, we then surround that dispersed pigment particle with various layers of chemistry that provide all of the end use properties that are needed from the ink. Now having done that, we now have to organize the jetting. So. What we are seeing here in this, uh, in this video sequence uh, is a series of stills from a jetting rig. Now we employ some very expensive physicists who spend all day long peering into microscopes and analysing uh, the sort of data that you can pull from, from, from such a jetting rig. And what they're looking for 
is, as you can probably just about, I'm not sure whether you get it on the video, just about see, they're looking for perfect droplet formation, they're looking for jets that fire straight, and they're looking for the lack of satellite formation. There are some other things that uh, you can't see here, so they look, at, uh, they look at drop mass, they look at drop velocity, and all of the, the, the data that you need in order to organise correct jetting. Now these two pictures here show the difference between good jetting and not so good jetting. Here we have uh, the, nozzle, the, the, the droplets coming out straight, perfect droplet formation, no satellites. Here we have three issues. This is, this is bad but not terrible. Now what we have here, these droplets are not in a line. So what that means is that the droplet will not land where the computer within the, uh, the inkjet print engine thinks it's going to land. So the image, image formation uh, is compromised. In addition, you have satellite formation in this, these sequence of drops here. A satellite is a small droplet and it may land next to the main droplet, uh, creating some distortion. Or it could in fact break away and end up in, uh, where there should be no ink at all in the non-image area. And almost worse than either of those two things, we have nozzle deviation. So this nozzle and this nozzle, the, the ink is firing in the wrong direction and the droplet will land in the wrong place. Now going from here to here, many people would think that this is a bad ink and it's simply a matter of changing the ink formulation. It's not quite as simple as that. Uh, what, so what we do at Fujifilm is that we tune the inks to the print head and we tune the print head to the inks. Uh, we organise uh, and adjust um, the waveforms, the, the waveform being the, uh, the, the way that the signal is delivered from a computer to an inkjet head so that it fires in the correct way. So after we've done this, we have a stable dispersion, we have uh, the ink properties and we have good jetting. We will have a small laboratory sample which says R&D sample. What we now need to do is to turn that laboratory sample into maybe a thousand kilo batch of material for sale to our customers. Behind me we have some pictures of our Broadstairs manufacturing facility where we make up to 6,000 tonnes of inkjet ink annually. We've recently invested 5 million euros on expanding uh, this facility, adding equipment and, uh, and services uh, to create this new area. Now what I can't show you on these pictures, of course, is the real heart of the process. And the heart of our manufacturing process, of course, are the systems that we use. But more importantly than that, it's the people, because people make processes work. Now, these processes, these processes are a blend of Japanese manufacturing philosophy with Western practicality, and it is a perfect blend. The system that we now have is one of, of true quality assurance rather than quality control. Quality control assumes that something is going to go wrong and puts in place some, some checks and balances to make sure that you then correct what has gone wrong. Quality assurance means that nothing goes wrong in the first place and that is the process that we use. So raw materials come in, they are within a specification, they are guaranteed to be within a, spe a specification. They are used in a process control manufacturing, manufacturing system and we have at the end of the process a quality assurance department that looks at, uh, this is a measurement department, that looks at the specification and compares the, the properties of the ink to that specification to make sure that everything is perfect every time. Now the result of this is that we can manufacture the, the, the inkjet products that we've, we've spoken about, we can manufacture them in very large quantities and they are always exactly the same. So that really finishes our discussion of inkjet technology. It is a, it, it is a great example of Fujifilm technology, quality and manufacturing in operation. <laughs>